You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. Information theory has been used a lot in, in, in biology. Uh, Shannon, as you know, worked for the Bell Telephone Company, and so he was concerned with the e economics of information transfer. So he wanted to think of, think of ways in which um, information could be most economically encoded, and he came up with the idea of the bit of information as the fundamental unit of, of, of information. Information for him meant reduction of uncertainty, and it was actually measured as reduction of uncertainty, and his formula uh, measured it like that. One of the things that comes out of Shannon-type mathematics is this idea that information as a commodity is easily translated into other media. So it doesn't matter whether it's in the form of punch paper tape or um, little blips on um, magnetic tape or uh, little um, noise, Morse code or little, little noises going down a wire. Um, if, if it's um, in the same, if it's translated from one digital code to another, then it can be faithfully rendered at the other end with a certain possibility of error. Uh, and I very much like the idea, I've, I've been very inspired by the idea of information as a commodity, which as you just described it, can be translated from one medium to another and retains its value, retains right. its meaning um, throughout all these different translations. Sharon was concerned with the economics of information transfer such that nothing is lost or little as possible is lost, uh, different from the semantics, from actually what, what the information means, which is a whole separate subject. It, let's try and unpack this even more. So it, what is information in general, in your view, and then what is information in genetics specifically? Maybe, maybe that could be helpful. Well, as I said, Shannon described it as, or, or measured it as reduction in uncertainty. So when it's, when it's transferred from one place to another, in, in, in human terms, you, you, you start with the idea that there's a sender and a receiver, right. and, and the receiver doesn't know something that the sender does know. So um, Shannon was, uh, was aware that something like the sun rose this morning contains much less information than the sun did not rise this morning because the receiver already expects that the sun would rise. And therefore, I mean, right. the, the, the reduction of, of, of uncertainty, the surprise value is, is, is less. So um, the, the one bit of information is, is that which halves your uncertainty. Um, right. If you have something like, um, uh, if, if, if I turn up a card for an ordinary pack of cards, and I ask you to guess um, the, um, the, the color of, of, of the card, your uncertainty is, is exactly um, two, twofold. It could be red or it could be black. So if I tell you it's black, that's one bit of information. It's, it's been reduced by one, by it's been divided in, in half. Um, it, um, if I tell you it's a, it's a heart, um, that's two bits of information because you don't know whether first whether it's a color and second given that given that it's red say whether it could be a heart or a, a diamond so that's how he measured information and you can measure information exactly in the same way in the genetic code be it being a quaternary code rather than a binary code it's a little bit more complicated i have had on my show dr david fialo and we were talking about you know what is information in biology and he was explaining that the base information in biology is nucleotide sequences. Sequence information is the thing that's being communicated from parent to child. But that doesn't necessarily have any sort of meaning to it, right? It could be a random chain of, of RNA, for example. Claude Shannon wasn't interested in meaning. He was just interested in how do you transfer information from one thing to another. If you talk about this in biological terms, he's interested in replication. How do you get a system going that can replicate a chain of RNA, for example? But in biology, we also care about meaning. And what I mean by that is that, you know, the, the specific sequences in our DNA help us better survive and reproduce. And what you've so beautifully spent your career explaining is really, I guess you, you could say, is where that meaning comes from. This is what Darwin explained through the process of natural selection. As soon as you have a system capable of replicating, you can get Darwinian evolution. And just automatically, those sequences which happen to be better at reproducing than others 
end up becoming more common in the population. And you get this explosion of not just information, but useful information, information that's useful in the project of surviving and reproducing. It is very amazing and it, and it completely gives the lie to anybody who thinks you have to have a creator uh, to, to start these things off. It, it really does show you've got an increase in complexity, increase in adaptive efficiency as the generations go by. So that was just a clip from my conversation with Richard Dawkins. You can see the whole thing. There's a link to that down below. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed it. I upload clips pretty regularly, talks and conversations and presentations that I've done on genetics and evolution. And I am gearing up to start doing weekly videos again here that are completely new, completely fresh.